to the marketplace coming up this afternoon an international court to give ruling on the almost 400 million dollar tax charge against Talo by Ghana Revenue Authority by middle of this year. Also coming up, National Communications Authority in talks with the Gambia and Benin governments to roll out free roaming services. Plus, a security tax force confiscates smuggled cooking oil and alliances brands. We have more from an anti-smuggling operation carried out in the central business district of Kumasi. The clue. My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. First up, an international court hearing the almost $400 million tax charge against Talo Oil by the Ghana Revenue Authority should give a ruling by the middle of this year. That's according to Talo Oil. We took the case to a court in London. George Raffi has details. The court in London is looking at coming out of this judgment on this case. After hearing all the parties involved, Talo Oil took this action to the international court after raising some concerns about the almost 400 million dollars tax charge by the ghana revenue authority the authority claims it took this action after reviewing talos operations since 2021 and realized that this amount of money is due to be paid to the state the ghana revenue authority insists it stand by this assessment and the Talu oil should be paying this amount of money to the government of ghana in the form of taxes but Talu Oil, on the other hand, is contesting this assessment. It will be interesting how the outcome of this case could impact on the operations of Talu Oil going forward. It has already posted a loss of more than $100 million in its operations for last year due to some accounting treatment of its dealings in the Chinebua and Nyerantome 10 oil area here in Ghana and how that affected its business for 2023. Talu Oil is not the only company as the Ghana Revenue Authority is going after other multinationals in the oil space here in Ghana for some taxes that they failed to pay to the state over the years covering their operations in the country. Now the government through the National Communications Authority is in talks with the Gambia and Benin to rule out free roaming services. This will mean that Ghanaian businessmen, tourists or traders traveling to those countries won't be required to pay additional services for data or any other mobile services. Speaking at a Platinum Night event, welcome telecommunications service provider Telesel onto the domestic market. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said this move will enhance businesses among in these countries when it becomes successful. This roaming service is part of a broad ECOWAS initiative aimed at connecting member countries digitally with ease. According to Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamia, government has been able to reach an agreement with neighboring Togo to roll out a free roaming services on all networks in both countries and at the moment, the National Communications Authority is in the process to sign a similar agreement with Benin and 
the Gambia. The Vice President therefore urged the Telesel to ensure affordable and quality services as government will provide all the necessary support. Although adopted in 2016, Ghana's free roaming services agreement with Côte d'Ivoire in June 2023 presents the first such arrangement. Ghana has also signed an agreement with Togo to begin free roaming services between the two countries this year. The National Communications Authority is also engaging Benin and the Gambia to establish similar free roaming bilateral agreements. Chief Executive of Telesor Patricia Obunai told Joy Business that the takeover of Vodafone has been strategic to ensure a competitive market for the Ghanaian consumer. Telesor has been very clear that they are here to drive disruption, so they are bringing a lot of innovative solutions. In the end, it's about the network and giving customers a great experience on the network, so they are committed to investing in that network. And I think that's thing is about how we deliver customer experience. It's one thing that everybody complains about and they've been very clear on how they believe will make a difference in Ghana, especially to our fixed broadband customers. You know how it feels like. And I think the third is in financial inclusion, but going doing it digitally. So you will see a lot of changes in the way we deliver solutions when it comes to financial inclusion as well. The Platinum Night event was a platform for the new company to engage stakeholders in the industry and policymakers on the planned rollout of the Telesol service. In other news, the Ashanti Business Owners Association is discontent over the supposed anti smuggling operation by a joint tax force of the National Security, Food and Drugs Authority, and Tree Crops Development Authority and Customs. The tax force stormed the central business district of Kumasi to seize vegetable cooking oil brands believed to be unlicensed and smuggled into the country. But affected business owners are calling for stringent surveillance at the ports and harbors. Emmanuel Bright Kwaku has more in this report. The tax force combed retail shops in the central business district of Kumasi for unlicensed and smuggled vegetable cooking oil products. The armed men moved from one retailing shop to another and seized products worth millions of Ghana CDs, including Global, Diana's, Special and Roach vegetable cooking oils, at least four brands were confiscated by the tax force. The tax force claimed to be executing the joint mandate of the Food and Drugs Authority, Customs Division, Tree Crops Development Authority and the National Security. Dr. Paul Amenin is the coordinator of the tax force. They are called PZ, uh, 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 market. A call on you who sell product be a while, a friend Roach. Sal Roach product, no, you will two brand, Baku free Malaysia, Baku Sufri Indonesia. Near free Malaysia and your register, near free Indonesia and your register, but a Nina the same brand, a the other crop and two draw on your day. When we visited the market, we realized there is a clone of one of the cooking brands known as Roach. It is originally produced in Malaysia. But the clone is from Indonesia, which is not licensed. Oils are used for various products, so we are concerned about the type of oil this is. But the Ashanti Business Owners Association is distraught and unhappy with the development. A member of the group, Oseya Koto, says at least 20 gallons of the products were seized at his shop. I know what I'm talking about. I'm catching them. I say, oh, you know, the media banner, the media ton. In your dear friend, he say, oh, my mama ton. Do you want me to say that? I'm saying, no, 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 no. I didn't tell you what I'm saying. I'm saying, unless I'm provided duty, pa. In team, in team, me so me ton. Me a buyer, me turn o o be ho. I import ho, and I'm a friend import ho. Me say, oh, you know, my dear, my you know. And as I I contacted the person I imported the goods from to send me his import duties receipt, which he did. But the tax force went ahead to seize the oils. This is what baffles me. 
it was send the me was up na me me dey chere o me dey show mo mo si dabi da enya de o mbeti ase o ye no o mo si si o ye no the group says their confirmation from the regional coordinating council could not ascertain the identity of the tax force Charles Kusi Apiakubi is the executive secretary of the association. So we place the call at the regional coordinating council to the director and to the minister. And the feedback we had from the minister suggests that he has no aware of such people having such operation in the market space. These men were angered because the regional minister intervened in the situation. And they told us that you show us where power lies. Who are supposed to man our borders? The national security, the immigration, the serfs. How do smuggle goods get into our market? This suggests to us that they are not doing their work well. If you are not doing your work well, why do you want to criminalize that innocent businessman who is doing his right thing as a citizen? For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Quickly. All right, you're watching the marketplace. The chair of the International Chamber of Commerce, uh, Maria Fernanda Gaza, as part of her official visit to Ghana, launched the ICC rules on combating corruption. The rules are designed as a method of self-regulation by businesses against a background of applicable national law and international legal instruments. Here to talk a bit more about it is Emmanuel Donikwami, who is Secretary General of the International uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us in the studio. And so uh, Maria has concluded her visit to Ghana. She's off to Cameroon. Um, how would you describe her visit? What was the outcome, do you think? I, in summary, I would say it was a very successful trip. Um, it, we kick-started with a tour of the Kwame Nkrumah Museum in Munizilium, and then the a tour of the Usu Castle. It actually gave her first an experience mm. of uh, what ancestors went through and the connection between Ghana and the Americas. You know, she's coming from Mexico. She's right. heard a lot about uh, our colleagues uh, in the diaspora. And she's been wondering where the whole uh, slavery thing did happen. And right. a lot did happen in Ghana. And uh, she's now going to be our ambassador when it comes to attracting the type of investment in tourism and even getting tourists to visit Ghana. Uh, that's interesting. Well, so the highlight of the visit, I guess, was the launch of the ICC rules on combating uh, corruption. Tell me about uh, the launch and how helpful it will be um, against the, uh, in the fight against corruption. Um, the rules are voluntary and uh, it's, it's, it's encourages, um, what do you call it? companies to maintain high standards of integrity in their transactions, um, either with the public uh, sector or public institutions, or even between enterprises. Mm. So um, they are more or less like a guide. But in most jurisdictions, we already have uh, our own laws that are supposed to, and um, they more or less are supposed to complement what we have as our own national laws. And where there are conflicts, uh, your national laws will definitely prevail. But it's a very good guide, yeah. Okay, uh, and so just uh, for the benefit of our audience, um, so what is in the, in, in the um, I mean, what sort of tools, I mean, what sort of um, encouragement or what sort of um, guidance are you giving to the businesses to enable them, you know, tackle corruption? And when you say it's voluntary, that means uh, is, Businesses are not bound to these uh, tools, are they? So how do you encourage them to take them on? I wouldn't say businesses are not bound because most of our ICC model contracts mm -hmm. have clauses to deal with uh, corruption. And these are very common in uh, big contracts with oil and gas companies. If you are an SME and mm -hmm. you want a contract with uh, the big companies like the Talus and uh, the MTNs and others, they always have an anti-corruption clause in there. And these are clauses that are drafted by experts. So it's, a, it's not just a Ghana thing, it's a global uh, uh, expectation that you will abide by the high standards of integrity. So the guide will help you in drafting your own contracts with your own colleagues. Um, I know some of the clauses of interest have to do with uh, 
um, support for, I think, Article 6 within the rule, uh, support for political parties' contributions. We just have to be transparent, <laughs> you know. That's uh, an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> and Especially then, because we are in an election year. I, I realized that that was the interest for most. <laughs> most. And then it falls within four categories. Uh, one, the first part has to do with the rules itself. And then the second part has to do with uh, implementation, what you need to put in place within your own setup. And you should start from the board chairman to, to, to the CEO, to all your managers. It should run through your organization as part of your business culture. Um, yeah, and, and so beyond this, how is the ICC helping uh, businesses and the uh, public sector build capacity? Um, during the visit of our chair, um, we had a privilege of meeting um, heads of most of our state institutions. We met the Honorable Minister for Trade and Industry, and, and we know her visit comes right on the heels of um, the 13th WTO Ministerial Conference in Abu Dhabi. And a lot of issues were discussed at the conference. And uh, the key one has to do, the, to do with the moratorium on uh, electronic transmission. And um, his, her visit has to do with the next conference happening in Cameroon in 2026. Mm -hmm. And to get Ghana's support on most of the key issues. And um, they did have an agreement on, it looks like ICC and Ghana are on the same tangent when it comes to most of the issues, um, that the internet should be tariff. We shouldn't have tariff barriers hindering the use of the internet, that data flow should not attract tariffs, and that's our stand. And the WTO itself needs the necessary reforms to, to, to build business, where well, all the rules are rules made for businesses, not for public institutions per se. Um, the other highlight was a request from Ghana that uh, ICC is well known for its uh, International Court of Arbitration All right. and that there is the need to have a hearing centre in Africa, preferably Ghana, since we have the AFCFTA Secretariat over here, and, um, which is being considered. Um, a hearing centre in the sense that when we draft contracts and uh, there are disputes, the key issue has to do with location, and that where is the place uh, for, for, for the arbitration to be had. And most of the time it's in London or Paris, and our lawyers have to fly there, and the cost implication of a hearing uh, in those jurisdictions is quite high. So if we have it closer on the continent, it builds the capacity of our young lawyers uh, in mediation and in arbitration. And ICC Ghana has been doing a lot on that front, running training programs for lawyers who want to develop a career in arbitration and mediation, also running training programs for the banks in the area of trade finance, and then for exporters and importers and those in the logistic business in the area of uh, our rules. I, the key one is the ICC's in terms 2020. We do run training programs to build the capacity of uh, most businesses involved in international trade. All right, I, I want to bring up the, the first ICC Africa um, Sustainable Supply Chain Summit. Um, I, I know many issues came out of that summit. How have they been addressed? Um, there were a lot, and uh, we had speakers from Google, DHL, MESC, um, from our own private sector, uh, Ghana Export Promotion Authority, MPS. And um, the key findings as we all know, is, is the high cost and time in doing business. But Ghana was applauded for our own public-private partnership in developing a paperless port system, uh, especially the kind of infrastructure we have at uh, the uh, Meridian Port Services Terminal 3. It's okay. a state of the art, you know, and it's the first port of call in Africa at the moment. So um, we were applauded for that, but we still have issues with the cost. Uh, you know, of late people have been complaining of the fees and charges at the port, which we all believe, uh, together with uh, what's been done as part of our implementation of uh, the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement, the time really steady has been developed. And uh, the ministry has agreed to share it with the media and then with the business community for us to look at the findings of the study, what is driving the cost, what are the uh, 
constraints in there and how best can ICC itself help to address these constraints based on the time really steady, how long it takes to clear goods at the port and the cost implications. So those were raised. The other thing that is also key is the productive capacity. On the continent, we don't manufacture that much. We import mm. almost everything. So if a ship should dock in, on, in our ports, it's likely to go empty. Or if it should even move, we also encourage investment in short sea shipping. The big ships can come here and then uh, those involved in uh, logistics and transport can invest in smaller vessels to move goods to um, other smaller ports. But the key thing is the productive capacity. Are we producing enough, be it food, uh, to feed the rest of Africa? Uh, are there other manufacturing concerns on, in the other countries for the connectivity to yield the necessary results? Yeah, and, yeah sorry, to cut it. I, I would imagine that the low integration of Africa and the global um, value chains yeah. is also a problem. How upbeat are you about after and the prospects of that? Um, and, and I read today that uh, a lot of people were, I think a deputy minister was saying after has been a failure. I, I think otherwise. I think it takes time. Um, we, unfortunately, we launched after at a very tough period um, globally. You know, the global economy itself was shaken by COVID. And then we have uh, the various uh, supply chain issues post COVID, you know. And then you have all these conflicts uh, around the Red Sea area and then affecting the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, so there has been some turbulence in, in the system, which has really affected the, the pace of uh, growth of, of, of the Africa continental free trade area itself. Mm. So we, there are initiatives um, which both countries are undertaking, especially in the case of Ghana, to take businesses to the various countries. Uh, government, through its national coordination office, is taking businesses to the various individual countries to look for partners. And that's where ICC comes in. We are the global, the world business organization with presence in almost every country. So through the World Chambers Network, be an importer or an exporter, you are likely to find a partner. Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, and as we conclude, final question, how does one become a member of the ICC? Um, it's straightforward. Um, um, you can, anybody watching us can even contact you and can get our details. <laughs> On the ICC website, there is a... a, 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 a um, um, it's, it's on the ICC website where you just click and then you can just register to become a member online. You just pay a token. But we operate through our various commissions. Mm. So where your interest is, if you are into energy or agri, you fall within the Environment and Energy Commission. If you are into trade facilitation, maybe uh, a freight forwarder or a ship owner, you fall under Customs and Trade Facilitation Commission. If you are a lawyer interested in mediation and arbitration, we have a commission on arbitration and ADR. So we have various commissions for the various interest groups. Mm. So I'll invite uh, anybody watching us who wants to be a member. And the benefits are enormous. Yeah, are enormous. All right. Imano Doni Kwame, Secretary General, ICC, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. And you're watching the marketplace. Moving on to some other stories, the managing director of GNJ Technical Services Limited, Godfrey Seidu, is charging the public to invest in quality generators to serve as a stable standby in times of power outages. According to him, even though there are other substandard generators on the market, his outfit is committed to providing customers with quality generators. He spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the company's 30th anniversary celebration. GA Technical Services Limited says it has provided quality and durable generators to homes and institutions in Ghana and beyond in the last 30 years. The company has also offered some needy but brilliant student scholarships to aid in their academic development. Speaking to at the launch of the company's 30th anniversary celebration, Managing Director of GNJ Services Limited, Free Edu, called on the general public to invest to quality standby power equipment uh, the competition is stiff the main challenge we have now is that we sell quality 
but you can find any gen set on the market these days. Trying to let people know, differentiate, is the challenge, one major challenge we have. But what we tell people, here we are, like I said earlier, we're going to take someone's generator which has worked for 30 years and then give him a brand new one, free of charge. I don't think any of the gen sets you see out, out there, they try to compare us with their prices, will be able to do more than 10 years for you. So if you invest in our generator, you are investing in something which can cater for you uh, in your lifetime. Because if I'm going on pension, and out of my pension, I've managed to buy a generator whilst I'm retired, and my income is not what it was before. So this is what we promise to our customers. There are challenges, but we've, we meet them. Okay. Deputy Managing Director of the company, Mati Esiedu, disclosed that there are plans in place to diversify and bring on new products that will cater to the needs of its customers. The next 30 years or going forward, I wouldn't say things are going to be so different because we have to be guided by what we've been doing for these 30 years. So we're going to be stick to the same values, same principles, same culture, but we're going to be intentional with our growth. We're going to diversify. I think Kingsley asked some questions about product diversification. We're going to be looking into that definitely. But it's more of making an impact, making a difference in Ghana. Earlier, Dad was to MD, sorry, was talking about how we supplied some generators to KNUST engineering department and Accra Polytechnic. So it's if you can do some of these things just to make a little impact on Someone's education, someone's life, it, it, it speaks a lot. As part of the celebration, the company is offering a 10% discount on its services to customers. All right, and that's our bulletin this afternoon. More news on our website, myjohnline.com forward slash business um, in the background there for you. Ghana in talks with Benin and Gambia for free mobile roaming services, according to Bomia. Also, inflation to decline between 13 to 17 percent by December 2024, according to the Bank of Ghana. MyJoinline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time tomorrow.